sound like? $30 for a hand of bananas? Severe drought could destroy banana plants and drive food prices up. And now we can see the dead coral reef below us. Dead coral? I thought it was alive. No, it's dead. If you look at the pictures, you can see what the coral used to look like. Oh, wow. Natural wonders like coral reefs are disappearing. But listen closely again, and you can hear the solution. People disposing of garbage responsibly and not in drains and rivers. People responsibly discarding engine oil. Our climate may be changing, but so can we. Making small changes together can have a huge effect on reducing the impacts of climate change. Act now. Rally. Rethink. Respond. This message is brought to you by the OECS Secretariat with funded assistance from USA. Continuing the news, hard work and dedication have paid off for students at the St. Giles Anglican Primary School. They have won a literacy competition organized by the parliamentary representative for St. Andrew Southeast. Details from Imani Trini Amondo Sampson. Champions of the Emlyn Pear Literacy Competition, St. Giles Anglican Primary School, displayed an outstanding performance at the closing of the competition on Monday. It's feels very wonderful because it's the first time and we won, so it feels very awesome. I feel surprised because I, ne I never know that we could have been like in the fourth, coming first in that kind of a thing. As they say, like Meta, this and the Sunday, uh, and then is high school. They should be winning. So I am glad. Five schools participated in the first ever competition of its kind. Among the participating schools were St. Andrew's Methodist, St. Andrew's Anakin Primary, Crochet Primary, and Telescope Primary School. Categories such as drawing, coloring, research projects, spelling bee, and singing were features of the competition. Minister Peer took the opportunity to encourage the students to get involved and participate in school activities. She also shared that the competition is a foundation activity. And so I want to use this opportunity to encourage you, when you get a chance in school or in your class to read, take those opportunities. When you get a chance to go and sing with the school choir, take those opportunities because what they are doing is helping to shape you into the best person that you ultimately can be. So my advice and my encouragement to you as students this afternoon is to get involved. It is anticipated that the competition will be bigger and better in the upcoming years. I have indicated before that next year's competition is going to be even bigger and better and I want to encourage them to start preparing from now. Reporting for GIS News, I am Amanda Sampson. Government has promised its full support to the concept of geographical indications for the promotion of some of Grenada's major agricultural products. Details from Jerry Malcolm. So should Grenada use branding? Branding and the use of GIS is not a magic wand. Two of the presenters at the November 8th consultation on National Geographical Indications, organized by the Ministry of Legal Affairs for Farmers and Commodity Boards on the island. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Legal Affairs, Merlin St. Bernard, says government is given full support to this venture. The government of Grenada understands the importance of the GI concept and the benefits which can be derived from promoting the origin link quality of products such as Grenada, nutmeg and cocoa and the possible positive effects on agriculture and tourism. Geographical indications like branding are mechanisms being used more and more by businesses and countries to realize more profits for products that are unique to their localities, like fine flavored chocolate being linked to Grenada, good quality watches linked to Switzerland and so on. They can take the kind of product which we have produced for many, many years as a commodity product, and it can reposition it on the international market to sell at a scale of production which is within our reach and at a price which is greater than our cost of production. Senior legal officer in the Ministry of Legal Affairs, Robert Branch, says government has already moved to create draft legislation which will make it possible for Grenada to capitalize on geographical indications. A great percentage of uh, crops such as um, nutmeg and cocoa 
are sent to the European market. And so the Europeans are saying to us, we recognize this concept. If you use this concept, we'll give you help to develop it. We'll give you all the technical assistance that you need to do it. So the question is, why not? The PS mentioned to you that the government basically has the legislation in place, or at least draft legislation in place already to have these concepts used. And representative of the EU services unit here, Abiola Street, says it's a wonderful opportunity for this country. So the bottom line for companies is more profit. If you're selling more of your product, and if you're able maybe even to charge a little extra in price compared to your competitors, you're going to be making more money. Participants were unanimous in their support for the venture, though opinions differed as to whether or not Grenada was ready for it. A special web tool used as part of the activity helped settle the matter. That's news. Sports is up next. Hi, I am Junior Murray. Let's keep our athletes and sports clean. No dope in sports. Stalwart West Indies batsman Shinaran Chandapur plays his 150th test match in the second test in India. Hard Rock moved to the top of the GFA Premier Division standings after being awarded three points and three goals after Paradise failed to show up for the engagement last week Sunday at Progress Park. And games in the quarterfinals of the Wagi T Super Knockout Football Tournament brought forward to Friday from Sunday. This is another of the GIS Sports. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites. Starting with cricket, it will be a milestone for middle order batsman Chitnaran Chandapal when, when the second test between the West Indies and India starts midnight tonight local time at the Wankiri Stadium in Mumbai. Chandapal will become the first West Indian to play 150 test matches when the game, end, when the game starts this evening. The 39 year old left hand dependable left-handed batsman who had been penable over the years made his debut 19 years ago on home soil and border Guyana becoming the 204th player to wear the maroon West Indies cap. Chandler Paul says that he's hoping to looking forward to the big occasion which he hopes to celebrate with a splendid performance. He said that he never thought he would reach so far at the beginning but knows well who knows where one can go if he keeps persisting. Tiger, as Shana Paul is affectionately called, has scored 10,897 runs at an average of 51.89, which include 28 centuries and 21, or make that 6 to 1, half centuries. Only fellow left-handed batsman Bran Lara has scored more runs than Shana Paul for the West Indies, 11,912 runs. Chandapur believes that he can overtake Lara once he continues to work hard. Meantime, West Indies skipper Darren Sami says that the objective is to is clear, <laughs> earn a series leveling victory that will invariably, invariably spoil Tendulkar's retirement party in the second test in Mumbai. Sami is expecting a much improved performance following a hectic training session over the weekend. He said that they have been in 
that situation before and believe that they can bounce right back with a strong mental attitude. He says that they have no other option but to rise strongly to the occasion and defeat the opposition. He says that they are taking a positive mindset onto the field, one that sees them taking 20 wickets in the match. West Indies captain is uh, attempting to finish the job and dismiss the opposition cheaply after knocking the uh, top order out as had happened before. He's also hoping that his batsmen will come good and put hundreds of runs on the board. Coach Gibson says that they are making a concerted effort to bat for at least a day and a half if needed on both occasions. Digital class coach Hard Rock have taken the lead in the tight race for the GFA Premier League title. They have been awarded three points and three goals for the unfinished game against Lime Paradise. Paradise did not show up for the continuation of the game that was brought to a premature end October the 27th at Progress Park after Hard Rock was awarded a penalty. Fans protested by invading the field. In any football game that is played, um, the rule is if, if there's a match schedule and a team didn't show, three points and three goals is awarded to the team that has shown up for the match. Now, in this particular instance, if there is a situation that will come out of that particular match, then it will be dealt with. But, but the rule is, like, it doesn't have to be Premier Division, First Division, any division at all. Once a match is carded, there's a schedule for a match, and a team didn't show, whether it's a transportation problem, whatever problem it is, three points and three goals goes to the team that has showed up. Now, if the team that did not show has an issue, as President is saying, then the issue will be done the day after. But as it stands, once there is a match and there's a no-show, three points, the resultant, the resultant three points and three goals is awarded to the match. Technical Director of the Grenada Football Association there, Lester Smith. The GFA says that the disciplinary committee will soon be given its verdict on the matter. As such, Hard Rock have now moved to 43 points, Paradise 41, and the Petra Craig Queens Park Rangers on 36. The final round of matches is scheduled for Sunday, November the 17th, with all 10 teams in action. Still with football, the GFA has expressed satisfaction with the 2013 season, which is drawing to a close. President Chenny Joseph said at a press conference this morning that the three tournaments, Premier League, First Division and Second Division competitions, generated plenty of interest and had keen and exciting competition. 2013 has been a very successful year for us in that what we have recognized is that starting with our grassroots program, which the technical director will speak more about, to as much as um, women's football, our youth program, our national senior team performance in the revived Winwood Island tournament, um, things like our match commissioners course or refereeing courses or coaching courses, many, uh, many things that has happened only in um, 2013 I'm speaking of is, um, is testimony to what we consider to be um, a very successful year. The tournament, Joseph says, have been well received. The season has been a bumper season in terms of attendance, domestic attendance to games. While we have not been able to benefit from revenue for these games because of uh, certain you know, restrictions and limitations, um, we are excited that the crowd has gotten back um, to the playing field watching these games. And therefore, we in the GFA want to say a special thank you to the fans, to the teams, the administrators of clubs, and to the um, well-wishers, as well as sponsors who have assisted us in making 2013 a successful year. Joseph has also been high in praise for the media, which he says played a big role in the success of the season. The relationship that we are currently experiencing with the media is one that we will not take in lightly. Um, we believe that the many successes that 
has in fact been identified by the general public and people who are passionate about the sport has been primarily because of the positive um, information that you have been taken to the general public and we want to pledge our commitment to 